So last weekend, the in-laws surprised us with a quick weekend excursion to Jasper National Park. We stayed at uh, the Fairmont Lodge right in the heart of Jasper. It was beautiful and gorgeous. The view was amazing and the fresh air was just fantastic. Exactly what we needed in the middle, kind of, of a very, very, towards the end of a very, very hectic year. We walked around Jasper and saw these flowers called snapdragons all around the town. These are completely dead in our hometown of Edmonton, but they were in full bloom everywhere in Jasper. And it was nice to see that at least in some places, the trees aren't all dead. We walked around and saw some local wildlife. You can see a very tiny bird here. And all the wildlife seemed to have a shocking lack of personal space. Kind of crazy, but really cool to see them up close. We then proceeded to go shopping where we saw some very poor fashion choices with bad puns abundant. Uh, it was hysterical to watch them and I, there was a lot of eye rolling but giggling from my husband. We stopped in this restaurant called Coco's Cafe where I had probably the most amazing London fog I've ever had called the Jasper Haze and the husband is adamant that he had his best teriyaki sauce ever. That afternoon we decided to go for a walk around the lake in front of our lodge. We went for about 90 minutes which I think is the longest walk that we had ever gone on together ever. and. Seriously, this is the lake that we walked around. It was absolutely gorgeous, and I still can't believe that I went there last weekend. We then proceeded to stop every so often just to look at the view, look at the mountains, look at the lake, look at various animals that we came across. And it made me realize how little you stop when you walk, when you're walking around in your day-to-day -day life. So it was just glorious to stop and stare at the view and perv on my husband. Hey, I'm married. I'm allowed. And then as we were walking, we just couldn't believe all of the naturalness of the path, the pine needles, the acorns, the rocks, everything, tree roots that we both tripped over multiple times. It was wonderful to walk slow, without a purpose, without a destination, just to walk and then look around the lake and then walk some more. It was glorious. These trees, we figured, had been there for a few decades at least. They were so tall and they just kept going and going and going, as you can see. It was kind of ridiculous. And yet, right across the path, new life was just starting out just brand new trees waiting to be grown. It was remarkable to me that they were that close together with such the time difference. Seriously though, that water is gorgeous. And then we came across the golf course, which is probably my least favorite part of the walk. The golf course, they threw rocks around the edge to make it look more staged, and it took away from the rawness of the area, and I, we didn't walk around that area of the lake very long. And then we saw some geese just kind of swimming away off to find food or home or glorious battle, I don't know, but they were off on some journey and we watched them for a little while as they got there. The lake and the mountain was an excellent way to remember that we were just escaping, we were getting away from a weekend. It wasn't a journey of and of itself, but just a break from the craziness of everyday life. It was really nice to not have to worry about checking my phone and checking my email and not making anybody coffee, just be and it was glorious. I'm going to use that word a lot, I think. There was a squirrel here. He was pretty elusive. I'm determined to get, I was determined to get one of these on camera at some point, but they are very camera shy. And then we came across a whole group of geese, and some of them were napping. They were really pretty and really quiet. They'd give the occasional honk as they cleaned themselves, and they just kind of floated there for a while. It was really cool to watch because you didn't, you don't often get to see a whole group of them just kind of hanging out without flocking around and eating and whatnot. They were so still. What a geese dream about, I wonder. Anyway, we kept we were going to keep walking past them to get a better view, and then this guy decided to stumble onto the path. It was a little bit nerve-wracking. I know swans used to be used as guards, but he was terrifying. You got a little bit close, and he'd just look at you and stare. So we watched him for a little bit, and then we gave him a very wide berth, thanked him for letting us take video, and continued on our way to the other side of the lake. Seriously, though, I don't even know if it's a male, but I assume that it is, and he just looks glorious. I'm going to be overusing this word a lot in this video, and for that I do apologize. We did come across, however, a swimming elk. Holy crap, are they powerful swimmers. I'm assuming it was a female because it didn't have any antlers, but oh, regardless, it was a beautiful animal. At this point, I'm trying to show you that the elk is trying to find a way to get off uh, out of the water and up. You can't see it, unfortunately. My zoom isn't that great on my camera, but the elk eventually walked up on a ledge, gave this great big shake, and then disappeared into the trees. And as we were watching, I just kept thinking, this is not something I would ever see in my hometown. And I kept bugging my husband relentlessly for the rest of the walk. We're going to come back, right? Please? Please can we come back? We're going to come back, right? I want to see more animals like this. It was wonderful. But eventually, I guess our elk met up with some friends because there were three of them wandering around this little cabin area on the opposite side of the lake from where we were staying. 
They were as big as the cars. They probably could have done at least as much damage to anyone as a car would. And they just kind of meandered around, nibbled on some flowers, peeked in some windows. Hey, how's it going? Seriously, though, they're humongous. I still couldn't believe it when I saw them. But they're so pretty. They were by our cars when we were driving there. They were by... Uh, they were right outside of our window the first night that we stayed. And yeah, just... No, nah, elk don't care. They're, hun they're the honey badgers of the mountain area. Elk don't care. They just want to hang out, get some food, look into some windows. It's their space. We're just encroaching on it. And we know that, and they know that. And they just put up with us because apparently sometimes we often throw them scraps. Also, tourists, seriously, keep your freaking distance. Those things will kill you, especially the males if they have the humongous big antlers. We saw a few with big antlers. They were a little terrifying, not gonna lie. And finally, finally, squirrel! I saw my squirrel! You'd think I was paparazzi the way he was running, but I managed to catch him for a little bit on video. They are so tiny and so cute, and they I got a picture of one just sitting there with his hands on an acorn, just slowly kind of picking it apart and eating it. And Oh, beautiful creatures. And then we found a little path to walk and we were getting tired. We've been walking for almost an hour at this point, so I was exhausted. So we sat on a bench for a while and we watched these geese. I couldn't believe that they would sit so still. I never figured that geese would actually stand on one leg and sleep. I'd never heard of that before. I knew that flamingos did. I didn't know that geese did it. So we watched them for a while until this really stupid woman came up and yelled at them to come closer. I was hoping for a battle, but they just kind of swam away. Seriously though, what do geese dream about? Fish? Food? I don't know. Whatever it was, they looked pretty content. And then we came across these wet footprints, and I couldn't figure out what they were at first. And then I eventually, oh puppy! And then eventually I realized this was where the elk came up, and there's the water where they shook off. And oh, it was a nice little conclusion to that story. So this was the dinner that we went to on the second night. It was a really, really fancy restaurant. It was really, well, not like uber, uber fancy, but pretty fancy. It was a really nice restaurant regardless. Anyway, the local farm that's just a few miles away from the lodge supplies them with food. And in turn, they give them uh, all their grease and oil and stuff from their fryers to run their machines. And it's nice to see that even in places where obviously there's enough money to go around, they still kind of keep in mind of taking care of the environment. and. I think that's just a wonderful thing that even with money it still can be dead. Also, the food was delicious. And finally, we were on our way home. As much as I love to travel, I love nothing more than the final travel. Remembering your favorite bits, and then the last hour always, there seems to be this nice quiet, sweet silence where everyone's just remembering the trip, remembering their favorite bits, and finally getting ready to go back home. Well, that was my first thought from Places video. I hope you found it interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed my trip to Jasper and I can't wait to go back. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you tomorrow with video games. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. Have a beautiful day.